Hi, it's Nathaniel Whiston here and welcome to Writers of West Anglia. Today I'm travelling to the village of Elstow. It's to the north of Wilsted, to the west of Shortstown and it's to the south of Bedford. It's in mid Bedfordshire and it's in West Anglia. Today's writer of West Anglia is a man synonymous with Elstow, Bedford and Bedfordshire in general. He was born on November the 30th, 1628 and he lived until August the 31st, 1688, so right on the last day of the school year. His works include Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, The Life and Death of Mr. Badman and most famously of all, The Pilgrim's Progress. I am talking about John Bunyan. I had an interview yesterday, Jeremy, for a position, an account executive at a company called, um, well I can't remember the name, but they do, uh, they, um, they sell insurance, um, no, it's insurance software, um, it's Insurance companies need software to do their claims, and this company, they provide... No, that's not it. Jeremy, I saw your good news. I didn't get a text from you, of course. But congratulations to you and Liz, finally getting married, eh? How about that? How about that? Well, well done, or good luck, or I don't know what you say. They said that there's something about when people call up to make claims, they need to write the information using this program, which I think, no. Um, I haven't actually read any of John Bunyan's books. I suppose if I should have read one of them, then it would have been uh, Pilgrim's Progress. That's the one that's translated in over 200 different languages, never been out of print since the 17th century, one of the most important books in Christian literature. But I uh, didn't have time. Busy man, got other things to do. Things are going very well with Alison, Jeremy. After she forgave me when I turned up late for our first date because I was in Grantchester doing one of these. And from then on, it's just been plain sailing. We've been texting, we've been seeing each other. We've just been finding out about each other and it's been really good. I mean, I don't know how I've done it, Jeremy. I've, I've struck gold. Uh, she's just amazing and looks a lot better than her pictures as well. I mean, she looked good in her pictures, but she looks even better in real life. I have, I've come up trumps there, Jeremy. I really have. Like when people are making claims, uh, there's like this software you have to use and then you you have to check if their claim what they're saying but Alison she is she is something else she is just amazing and I'm I'm a lucky man I'm a lucky man Jeremy to have met her I tell you and you're obviously lucky with Liz as well yeah I mean don't get me wrong not my type but but yeah we're going to Elstow, which is the birthplace of John Bunyan and also where he grew up. He spent most of his life there actually, apart from the time when he was in prison. Yes, that's right, John Bunyan was a jailbird. He was doing time, he was doing porridge. And we'll come on to why that was a bit later on. The job I've applied for is account executive and it involves uh, it involves being an executive for accounts. The pilgrim in the story is trying to get to the celestial city. In other words, he means heaven. And he goes through all these trials and tribulations. And some of those trials are kind of linked to Bedfordshire. And, and the area around here is the area in which he sets his story. So this is a very very important area for West Anglian literature 
and the perfect location to do an episode of Writers of West Anglia, in my opinion. The interview went very well. I got through to one of them. I definitely had a rapport with one of them. We were making some good eye contact and a few kind of nods in the right place and winks and little, well not winks, but kind of gestures, which made me think, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're buying what, what it is I'm selling. So I'm feeling confident, confident. Yeah. And we're here. We're in Elsto. Here in Elsto, where Bunyan grew up, he picked up two traits from his father. One, he learned the trade of being a tinker. And secondly, he picked up the habit of swearing all the time, which is interesting because I think I've stumbled across the genesis of the phrase, a tinker's cuss, because Bunyan swore a lot, his dad swore a lot, and his granddad swore a lot, and they were all tinkers. And the tinker's cuss phrase was first registered in 1850. So I think they were using it around 1630, 1640, and it only became well known about 200 years later. But I think the reason for the phrase, a tinker's cuss or a tinker's dam, however you want to call it, is because of Bunyan being a tinker and swearing. You heard it here first. This is Elstow Village Green, and this played an important part in young John Bunyan's life. One Sunday, he was here with his friends playing a game called Tip Cat. It involves hitting a small stick with a bigger stick. And that same day, he had heard a sermon from the church there saying to keep the Sabbath holy. And there he was a few hours later playing a game out here on this green. While playing that game, he heard a voice, the voice of God. And it said, do you want to go to heaven without your sins or do you want to go to hell with your sins? From that day onwards, John Bunyan did not play a single game of Tip Cat on a Sunday at all. And I tend to think that nobody else did because Tip Cat doesn't really survive nowadays. So it, it had a massive drop in popularity, possibly because of God's intervention with our young John Bunyan. As a boy, Bunyan used to roam around here playing games, dancing, those were some of his favourite activities. But at 16 he had to grow up and he became a soldier. He joined the Parliamentary Army, also known as the New Model Army, which sounds a lot cooler. And from there he didn't really get up to much. It was, it was one incident which uh, could have changed his outlook on things. He was told by a general or a sergeant, whatever, to go and besiege a village, him and some other soldiers, whatever they call a group of soldiers, a troop or a pack, I don't know. Anyway, they said, go and do it. And he went, all right. And then one of his mates said, actually, John, do you mind if I go instead of you? And John went, yeah, fair enough. And that bloke ended up getting shot in the head. So Bunyan literally dodged a bullet there. Just goes to show, doesn't it? You don't know where your life can take you, depending on what choices you make. Deep. After leaving the army, Bunyan got married and had four children. From there, he... Hang on, my phone's ringing. Hello, Nathaniel speaking. Oh, hi. Yeah, hi, no, good, thanks. Yes, yes, no, I thought it went well, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant, yes. That's, that's great, yeah, no, I accept, absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. After coming out of the army, he was a young man, newly married, and he had a newfound interest in religion. He joined a group called the Bedford Meeting, who were non-conformists, which was fine then, but as the merry monarch Charles II led the restoration period, non-conformists were outlawed. Bunyan, however, would not give up. He would not give up preaching, and he was charged with distracting the subjects of the kingdom with frivolous things, which in his case were the stuff he was preaching about. And in November 1660, he ended up behind bars. 
Bunyan was initially only sentenced to three months in prison, but because he refused to give up preaching, they left him there for 12 years. When he got out, he just carried on preaching, but they weren't too bothered with him then. They were probably sick of the sight of him. It was in prison where he wrote The Pilgrim's Progress, which tells us two things about the prison system. In Bunyan's case, it worked really well because he got a good book out of it. On the flip side, it didn't really work for the, the state because Bunyan just kept on re-offending, he kept on preaching. But I guess um, it was different times and crimes were different then and we probably shouldn't read much, too much into it. But for Bunyan, I think we can say that prison was really good for him. Look what we have here, a horse. And this is very appropriate because once Bunyan was released from prison, that's what he did. He got on a horse and he rode around Bedfordshire. He got the nickname Bishop Bunyan and he just went preaching. Just went from village to village, town to town preaching. People knew about him by that point. They'd actually read some of his works, unlike me. And he would go up and down the streets of Bedfordshire on his horse. That might be a pony actually. In 1688, Bunyan passed away. He was between Reading and London, off preaching again when he came down with pneumonia, and that was the end of him. But it's funny because, well not funny, ha ha, but it's interesting to note that in Bedford Town Centre today you can find a statue with John Bunyan. That's right, the town, the same town that put him in Nick, has now put up a statue to him. Just goes to show, doesn't it, it doesn't matter how down on your luck you are, how broken you can be, how out of luck your life is, all of a sudden it can turn around. In Bunyan's case it took about, you know, 300 years, but anything's possible. As soon as I get that first paycheck, I am out of that house. See ya Jeff, see ya Tanya, see ya Billy. Laters. This is usually the point where I say goodbye, but because it's the last in the series, I've got an extra treat for you, and one more stop to make. This is Beacon Hill, described in John Bunyan's The Pilgrim's Progress as a delectable mountain. John Bunyan used to like walking around this area, and I'm going to walk up Beacon Hill right now. I suppose some of you out there will think that's not a mountain, but that's a good thing about West Anglia. The mountains here, you don't need to bring your rucksack, you don't need your hiking boots, you don't need your crampons, you don't need your Kendall mint cake, you don't need anything. You just need a good jacket, a good pair of shoes, and away you go. Didn't take long. And here we are at the trig point of Deacon Hill and what a thrill it is to touch it. And it's spectacular. This is the reason why I came here today. And I suspect this is the reason why John Bunyan came here. Hertfordshire over there, Bedfordshire over there. Wonderful West Anglian scenery as far as the eye can see. I'm in a good mood, things are going my way. I feel like singing a song, and what better song to sing than one written by today's writer of West Anglia, John Bunyan. Here we go. <clears throat> he who would valour see, let him come hither. One here will constant be, come winds, come weather. There's no disco. And this is the place to end this series of writers of West Anglia. What a series it's been. We've found out about Orwell, Dryden, Bates, Marx, Plath, and finally Bunyan. I hope you've enjoyed watching these videos, and I hope to see you again soon. I'm Nathaniel Whiston, and this was Writers of West Anglia. Goodbye. Credits now, Jeremy. <laughs>